Hello everyone, my name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, and on this episode of Touring Our Local Market in Florence, we're gonna do something that you're definitely not gonna wanna miss. When it comes to quality, top to bottom, we're gonna explore something today that really is almost unmatched in our area, but I can show you better than I can tell you. So let's head over to Il Bongo Styles on Celebration Boulevard to meet Chef Alessandro, and let's just jump right in. All right, so I'm here joined by Chef Alessandro. We're here on Celebration Boulevard. And Chef, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, your background, your vision for the restaurant, all of that good stuff. Yeah, first of all, thank you for coming. My name is Alessandro. I'm obviously from Italy. I grew up uh, in Sardinia, which is an island on the uh, west coast of Italy, one of the biggest islands in Italy. I grew up there, and I always was interested about food, you know, playing around with my grandmas and moms and aunts. They were cooking at the house and, you know, some holidays, making fresh pastas and ravioli, all sort of things, you know, desserts and stuff. Um, so when I reached the age to be uh, going to culinary school, you know, I chose to go. And um, I formed uh, there, basically, I did three years in Sardinia and one year up north Italy after my family moved up north near to Venice. After that, um, I started working in hotels and um, restaurants near Venice and in Venice. Before I came here in the United States, I uh, already worked in Venice for over 12 years. Then life brought me here in the United States, and um, I've been going up and down the East Coast from Florida to Massachusetts. And uh, in, the mean, in the meantime, I just passed by Florence. Uh, I stayed here for a year long time ago, and it um, happened that I liked the way people were here in Florence. So after a few years, about eight years in Massachusetts, cooking for private or some restaurant and you know, on and off and stuff like that, I decided to come back here in Florence and uh, um, do a partnership with a friend of mine and decide to open the Bongo Style restaurant. What we were thinking to bring over here, um, we were thinking to actually bring the, um, as much as we could the authenticity of Italian food and not just the Italian food that is known here in the United States, like uh, that I call American Italian food. Uh, so we decided to do uh, fresh pasta, which our pastas are homemade. I do all the pastas here in the house. Using my creativity to blend, you know, different uh, other dishes, you know, which between uh, classic ones and specials. I want to introduce people to the reality of the food. That in Italy, yes, we have the traditional one that is that what it is. And, but we have constantly evolving food because being in the middle of the Mediterranean, you know, we constantly change and, you know, adapt to other foods. You know, that's a good point. That's something that I really never thought a whole lot about that till you said it. But even in American cuisine, there's um, like a, an example, this has got a Hispanic flair to it, but burrito tacos are a big craze right now, big trend. And I don't think that's something, that's not a traditional dish, but things change and then that opens up new ideas. And a lot of times I think in America, when we think about cultured cuisine from other places, we have these staples. So you got like spaghetti, lasagna, and like you know the, the, the list. But really though, 
uh, you do have that foundation, but cuisines change in other places. I just think that's a good point. You know, like culture, you know, yeah. they, from year to year you evolve, right. you change, so you adapt things. Obviously, firm with that traditional, because traditional stays traditional, that's what it is. You know, but some things they come, you know, because we grew up in a different times so from our grandparents mm -hmm. and say, so they knew something there. We know new things. So our, our mind changes and that changed the food too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I use my creativity to do, you know, special dishes or other, but you know, those that I have the, on the menu, they are very traditional. Obviously I adapted to the American palate. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, the, we can say like, uh, for example, in Italy, you will never see a, a scallopini in the same plate with the pasta. You know, pasta is a dish for us and, you know, and the scallopini is another dish. So that's here we adapt, you know, with everything. So I'm not saying it's wrong or right. Yeah. You know, it's just how um, or culturally it's made, you know, how it is the... Yeah, I think it's smart as it's adapting, uh, understanding, <clears throat> understanding food and understanding culture and understanding people. I think yeah. that's, um, I think that's an intelligent that, approach. Now, Italy is, uh, like I say, Italy is a, you know, it's a long, spread a long way on the Mediterranean. So obviously from one city to the other, you know, from north to south, food changes. It's not the same. So my people know more food from south you know, or, or some other knows more food from the north, um, but you know, it's all Italian food. You know, for me, grow up in Sardinia, you know, I got more influence of uh, more Mediterranean food. Yeah. You know, more, uh, we got some, uh, uh, made, matter of fact, some traditional Sardinian food is very related to the, to the Arab world, mm. you know, along to the Mediterranean. Uh, for example, we have a dish that is known from the Arab uh, culture as a couscous. In Sardinia, we call it fregula, and we daily use that. So it's the same thing, different name, but just to, to explain that, you know, cultures yeah. in the Mediterranean, it goes a long way. So that's my intent, is to bring more awareness of uh, different food that we have in Italy without taking away from the traditional ways. That's why we put the name Il Buon Gustaio Italian Eatery, because I didn't want to just stick with the Italian restaurant, which is with the name restaurant, yeah. because I don't want to be just a restaurant. I want to be an eatery where people come in and taste different things they didn't have before, unless they've been in Italy all over you know, the Mediterranean. Um, so with my small, you know, knowledge, uh, you know, and I, 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 that's what I like to do. I try, when I try to make people understand more and better Mediterranean Italian food. Well, that sounds great. So would you like to transfer back to the kitchen and we can take a look at some food? Absolutely. Sweet. I wanted to give the people the experience of when in Italy we cook and we make these things with grandma, and all the, you know, and the moms and stuff at the house. Yeah. You know, so that's how pasta was born, you know, and in the house. Uh, that, that's one the point, uh, firm point, that I, we decide with my business partner that we want to do. You know, I want to give the, the freshness of the pasta. Obviously, when you eat, uh, you know, it's different from the dry pasta, you know, the texture is different. And usually the special of the week is, fish with other things sometimes but the most of it's fish i used to get spe the fish special because i like the fish to be fresh every every week so uh this week we have a mahi mahi and it's gonna be served with uh asparagus and pomme de chasse the right prepaid because it needs time to be made and then i have a arugula cream sauce and the chili peppers uh coolies mm. which is a little bittersweet Stuff, spicy sweet. Skin side, which there's no skin on the bottom. Is hot. 
and I add salt and pepper and uh, put my mix of fresh herbs on top let it cook so this is a pomme duchesse or potato duchesse in English um, it's uh, basically it's a mashed potato uh, that's been mixed with uh, uh, Parmesan cheese and eggs and uh, in this case I use the fresh herbs inside just to recall the fish uh, flavor and uh, it's been mixed it up and then put it on a pastry bag and uh, create the form here and then uh, baked it to finish the cooking. Here we got the arugula cream. And by the way, for any uh, difference that people think uh, garlic in Italian food or Italian in all of these dishes, there's no garlic at all. And this is our chili pepper curry. Put in there. The asparagus. decorated with a fresh locally sourced micros or microgreens and edible flowers. Beautiful. And need an extra virgin olive oil. And that's the dish. Perfect.
All right, so there you have it. Now I'm standing outside of the restaurant, as you can see here, uh, not during business hours. I'm here on a Sunday, they're not open on Sundays. And I just wanna give you an overview and some final thoughts. So one thing that happened while we were in there last night is the woman beside us said, and I quote, it was the best salmon she's ever had in her life. Take that for what it's worth, but that happened. The other thing I wanna say is I know that it places like Texas Roadhouse the uh, honey cinnamon butter that they've got for the rolls there is super popular. That's like a sweet cream butter that you saw with those rolls. And then I'm telling you that that's super good. So it may seem like a minor thing, but see, that's something that's really popular at some of these restaurants. And I'm telling you that here, they've got that, that sweet butter is excellent. The other thing I'll say is that charcuterie board is the best that I've ever had. Certainly better than anything you could get in Florence by a mile and a half. I mean, it would have to be maybe two miles. For one, those grapes are cotton candy grapes. I don't know if you know what those are. You just go try them and you'll see uh, why they call them that. And then also the meat and cheese quality is just excellent, man. I mean, I could go in there and, and just make that a meal, honestly. Like that's just good enough. Now, what you saw that I had was an herb crusted salmon with a beet parmesan risotto. That's why I had that red tint. And that may sound strange for, you know, beets, but that risotto is excellent. I mean, you've got the fresh fish that's cooked to perfection seasoned well that arugula cream sauce is very very good and the two sides the potatoes with the mahi and the risotto with the salmon dish fantastic last thing i'll say as far as food well last two things the pasta dish that you also saw in the video is usually comes over risotto as well that's usually what we get i've had that a couple of times but i really wanted to get the salmon plus i wanted to mix it up a little bit for the video scallops clams mussels in it that's a really good dish and then for the dessert the custard that you saw with the berry sauce Imagine like you get a flan at your typical Mexican restaurant, but of much greater quality and overall just much better. Not as sweet, but rich, thick, creamy, really, that's really good. So it's an excellent dessert also is that custard. Now here's the last thing I wanna say and really a big point for this video. Much like Chef Alessandro was saying, there's so much variety in cuisine and in culture that exists. And when I tell you that what they're doing here is of the top premier quality in Florence, that is no joke. It would be hard to contest that statement. So what I wanna to say to you is this, but I wanna lead into it with something that our waitress said to us last night. And what our server said is that she was a very picky eater until she started working here. And then she slowly became open to a lot of things. And now she absolutely adores and loves the food here. Now she said that, and I just want to say that to you also, that if some of your cuisine is inside of a box and you're in the area, you need to get over here and be open. Come a few times, try a few different things, spread it out because sometimes there's an inner foodie lurking inside a person, but it has not been, he or she has not been awakened because they haven't had the right experience yet. And we talk about it all the time, quality, execution, and consistency. And when you talk about quality and execution, you can't find a superior product in Florence than what they have at Il Bungo Style. We've got some really good restaurants in Florence, but you can't find anything better than this, in my humble opinion. So I encourage you to come on by and check them out. I encourage you to try things that you haven't tried before. Take advantage of the fact that there's fresh house-made pasta here. And I hope you enjoy it, and I hope we hear from you. I hope you enjoyed this video also. If you did, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel for future content. I look forward to seeing you all around. And in the meantime, y'all take care. God willing, we'll see you on the next video. I'm just sitting here finishing up the editing on this and I forgot to mention one, they are open for lunch. We've done a video, which you can see here on their lunch offering already, but also in our pizza ranking in Florence, this restaurant's pizza is currently ranked in the number one spot. And based on what I already know, there's a good chance that they're going to remain there for the entirety of that ranking process. So I just want to point those two things out too. So yeah, y'all definitely want to check them out.